and welcome to another exciting episode of Tech Talks, the People and Planet podcast. I'm your host, Tony Marsh, and today we have a special guest joining us, uh, Anthony Torres. Uh, Anthony is the visionary behind BitHippie and its groundbreaking project, PQ. Uh, Anthony's journey from his previous career to the world of BitHippie is nothing short of inspiring, and he's here to share his story and shed light on the remarkable mission of PQ in the realm of personal development and accountability. Anthony, it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Hey, Tony. Thanks for having me. Excited no to talk worries. today. Yeah, no, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. So I guess I'll just dive right in. Um, I guess it'd be good to kind of understand um, what your kind of sort of journey was like and what would the inspiration behind the transition, I guess, from your previous career to Bit Hippie and what kind of sort of motivated that shift in your professional path, I guess. Got it. So, yeah, Bit Hippie is basically going to become my portfolio of projects that I work on um, from now forward. And the the thing that caused the shift is I often get these like creative impulses to tinker on something. And in some cases, it may or may not be directly applicable to what I'm doing at my yeah. full time job. And I need a place to put that creative energy. And so bit hippie. Um, and then when we start talking about PQ is just I was like, I need to tinker. And I have this problem I'm trying to solve for myself, which is like, how do I stay organized? So that's that's how sure. this happened. Cool, cool. And and I guess now that you're um, kind of sort of deeply involved with and sort of specifically uh, devoted to the the work that you're doing under the sort of bit hippie brand, I guess, and, and more specifically that that PQ project that we that we just mentioned then. Um, I wondered if you could provide, um, you know, for, for the people listening, a bit of a, an understanding of what PQ does and its kind of sort of core purpose or mission in the world of personal development and accountability? Sure, yeah, so um, people are complicated, myself included, right? Yeah. And I listen to a lot of these personal development um, podcasts or you know, YouTube videos or whatever, and yeah. it gives me a piece here and there. So for example, I'll hear a little bit about like financial well-being or uh, health and wellness or you know like being a good dad or like how to be a good husband and I, there's just so many things that people are trying to do um, and there's all these tools scattered about to do one thing or the other and what I wanted to do for myself was put it in one spot where they all work together and so PQ mm -hmm. is a place where I organize my jumbled mind into goals and then I have metrics that I track to help make sure I'm going to accomplish those goals and then the thing, the real key value add to PQ is you do this with friends. So they help you hold yourself accountable. And uh, it really increases the chances of you doing the things that you say for yourself. Cool. No, that sounds good. And obviously this is, um, I mean, how, how long has this, how long have you been kind of sort of running with this, with this project then? Um, I've been, so I've been using some version of PQ. It started off as a Google spreadsheet. Um, okay. for, for almost two years now. Um, okay. And then, um, so my accountability group that I'm with has five members now, and we were taking screenshots of the Google Sheet and pasting it in the Slack. And I was right. like, well, what if I put a little bit of uh, polish on this experience? And so what I did yep. is I ended up basically making a customizable table that you could click a button and it would post to Slack on your behalf. And then you could skip the whole make a screenshot, make it fit, make yeah. it consistent and paste it to the to friends. So it, it started off as just a little bit of a journal. And then over time, I was like, okay, well now what, how can I build on that? And mm -hmm. so the actual like software that I've been showing in the podcast episodes that I've been doing and what we're talking about today, um, I've been working on, let's call it about a year, um, but not full time. You know, it's like in fits and starts, maybe I'll do five days and then I'll take a break for a month and I'll go back for another five days and I'll add yeah, something yeah. else. And I try to not force anything. I like wait for the inspiration to hit for like, hey, what should I do next? And then I go build that in. Yeah, no, fair enough. And so I guess in terms of, um, I guess, expanding on, on, on where you're at now, how do you kind of sort of plan to network with others that would resonate with the, the message of, of, of PQ and, and that positive change? Yeah, so this has probably been the hardest question to solve for me. I'm not much yeah. of a salesperson, um, but I've been thinking about this a lot. 
And it seems to me like the kind of people that I'm looking for are like busy, uh, busy people, like professionals who are trying to juggle a lot of tasks. Um, whether it's family, work, health, all those things kind of smashed together. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. they, and they need the structure to, to like brain dump and then organize and then tackle it. And so yeah. uh, the couple of days ago, I put out a uh, LinkedIn page, my Bit Hippie LinkedIn page, where I'm hoping that I will attract busy professionals who need help getting organized and who want to do so with their friends so that they have a higher chance of making it actually happen. Absolutely. No, understood, understood. And definitely uh, something I can uh, empathise with uh, with myself. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's difficult being able to kind of sort of manage everything and, and you know, keep the best form of yourself at, at the forefront at, at all times. So I'm sure something like this would um, would definitely help. Um, so so just in terms of like the I, I mean, I know you mentioned a couple of the uh, the factors, um, uh, features beforehand in, in one of the previous answers. But I wonder if you could kind of sort of maybe just give us a quick overview of the kind of sort of key features and what would really make it kind of sort of stand out in the world of accountability tools, I guess. Sure. Um, I have I think I've assembled like the right mix of like just free form thoughts right? Being able to journal, um, quantitative, like how's your financial health, what's yeah. your like net worth, what's your hourly rate, what's your give to income ratio, you know? And then I also have flexibility with, you know, you and I are going to have totally different goals and metrics that we want to track each week. Sure. And so if you start with the life sheet, you fill this out, you understand, here's what I'm working towards. And then you go to the journal and you say, every week, I want to make sure I'm doing A, B, and C and evaluate yourself you know, honestly, um, that should help you do the things that you set out for yourself. Um, but I also wanted to make this fun. And so beyond just being like a data dump in a journal, I'm like, I, I built this concept of challenges in because we all want to do like, a, you know, we, it's, it's more fun to do a life change with a couple of other people, whether it's a fitness challenge, a meditation challenge, or like, uh, you know, whatever it happens to be. And so I tried to basically over time with my accountability group, all the things that we've been talking about organically, I'm kind of um, taking some subsets of that and rolling it into the PQ product. And then the very last piece that I think is what makes this um, work well, it, right now it only has pushed to Slack, but it, it's, you know, it could push to wherever you chat with your friends. Um, mm -hmm. I've been, I've been hanging on this phrase called proof of progress. And it was sort of a spin from all the crypto stuff, proof of work, proof of stake, all this stuff. I like proof of progress. And the point is okay. people want to help you so long as you're willing to help yourself. And so by mm -hmm. having the um, easy way to share, you're showing people progress and then, or, or even you could say I'm, I'm stalled, I'm stuck, but I've tried these things. And yeah. then you get wisdom from your community. Exactly. No, no, understood. No, that's really interesting. Um, and I know, I know. Obviously, you mentioned um, in sort of previous chats that we've had, you've you've actually got your own podcast um, that's recently started as well, right? That's right. Yeah. So uh, it's called the Brainwave Exchange, and I'm doing that podcast with a friend, Jason, who is in my accountability group. Cool. Cool. And 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 how how does that podcast, I guess, sort of tie into uh, PQ's mission um, uh, and how is it kind of sort of helping s spread the word, I guess? Um, it, I've heard a number of times uh, that if you want something, you need to put it out into the universe. And so this is my way of doing that. Um, and also, I think that is widely applicable to people using PQ to say, hey, mm -hmm. we've got a platform for you to declare your intentions to the world and if you can say, here's what I want, here's what I've tried, here's what's worked and here's what's not, then the collective wisdom of the network might help you say, oh, like, well, why don't you try maybe this book or try this yeah. course or try this idea that I have and then report back. Um, so I wanted to, some people are private, right? And that's what the journal's for. And you can keep all that to yourself. Some people want to share with just their tight circle. And then that's what that push to Slack button does for you. And then some people want to just kind of just blast it out to the universe and see what yeah. happens. And so the podcast gives us that, 
that sort of more um, that that the widest option to reach people. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, well, best of luck with uh, with that. I'll be uh, certainly tuning in uh, to, to kind of, nice. sort of find out a little bit more. Um, I know that again from from kind of sort of previous conversations we've had. I understand the PQ um, makes use of uh, low code development, which is quite quite intriguing. Um, how does this sort of approach benefit the platform specifically? Um, okay, so a little bit of backstory here uh, is I've been writing code for quite a while, and so I've done it the long form way for more years than I care to admit. And if you are a developer, you can probably appreciate that like most of an app is boilerplate code. So most of it is, um, you know, UI building is boilerplate for in a lot of cases, um, building REST APIs that handle the traffic from your apps is boilerplate code most of the time. And so you end up burning a lot of time doing things that don't add value to your business or your idea. Sure. And so... I latched onto this idea of low code because I wanted to skip the boilerplate. Um, I wanna make actually the distinction that there is a difference between low code and no code. Um, and mm -hmm. I have a strong preference for low code because there's going to be that time where you have an idea that the tool doesn't support out of the box. Sure. And so you need that escape valve to say, hey, like I want to augment this behavior of this tool with my own custom business logic. And I'll argue that should be the only thing we're doing nowadays with all this generative AI stuff. Like just do the part that makes you unique and let the boilerplate write itself. Um, sure. but to answer your question, how does it benefit the platform? I can iterate super fast. Like the, everything that I've showed you on the, uh, or it, sorry, showed in the uh, podcast I've done where I show the tool and even the mobile journal, uh, I'm not a hundred hours into work and I've got three completely distinct feature sets and then now an iOS app and it's just really quick and easy to test things. And if people like it or don't like it to change it um, where the cycle times are maybe two hours, three hours, not days yeah. or weeks or months. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, really interesting. I definitely see the uh, the massive benefits there for sure. Um, so we've kind of sort of talked about, um, I guess, in what ways sort of PQ addresses wellness and, and kind of sort of personal goals um, or, or personal development goals, should I say. Um, how do you think these fundamental aspects um, are becoming kind of sort of more accessible for, for, for people? In what ways, you know, does, does PQ address those, I guess? So I'm actually trying to figure that out by talking to professionals um, and see what, like Bit Hippie, going back to the name, right? Like I'm trying to kind of give to the people as much as I can. And so what I'm trying to do is accumulate a bunch of learnings that I found from a, a whole bunch of different sources into mm -hmm. like free tools, um, free resources, free like, you know, um, and you, you don't need a gym membership to be healthy, but you do need a work workout routine that is smart and effective and maybe can work with just body weights, for example, yeah. right? And so what I'm trying, and, and with the financial side of things, the same thing, like people need to understand cash flow, people need to understand how they need to budget for emergencies, and people should also be um, um, like aware of how much they're giving back versus are they in this constant like hoarding mode. Um, mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to do to make it accessible is I'm trying to figure out like little bits and pieces that will generally help the most people. Um, and then I make it customizable where you might have a slightly different need than me. So it's, uh, that's the kind of the approach I'm going for. Um, but I'm figuring it out as I go, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, understood. Understood. So what's, um, I guess, just in a, in a kind of a nutshell, then I guess what's, What's next? For, what's next for you and 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 PQ? Where do you where do you kind of sort of go from here? Yeah, so I keep thinking about different use cases. Um, I honestly, I've been I've been toying around with this idea that it might be useful in a like a team uh, team building or um, like I keep thinking sales people. You know, yeah. right? They have you know, if you own a sales team and you're trying to think about 
um, what behaviors you want each of your salespeople to have. Those are your metrics. And then they can talk about what's working or not. Like they can record all that stuff in the journal. Um, with the life sheet, you'll get a real sense for like what motivates these salespeople to, to wh why are they working? What are they working towards, right? Like what yeah. are their goals? That sort of thing. Um, and you can, th that's like one potential avenue. There's also, you know, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. I run engineering teams. Engineers need to do certain things and have certain behaviors. And, and so I'm trying to find the right niche in a team yeah. context to see how PQ can be beneficial here. Um, so there's like the individual and then there's more of the like business and I'm trying to figure out yeah. where I fit in that spectrum. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, sounds uh, extremely interesting. Um, and I think, you know, that's probably just about what we've got, what we've got time for today. So, uh, Anthony, thank you so much for uh, sharing your incredible journey and the impactful work that you're doing uh, at PQ um, with our listeners. Um, it's very evident um, that your commitment to kind of sort of positive change and the sort of innovative approach, I guess, to accountability tools, um, I'm sure you'll soon be making a, a very significant difference uh, in the world. So um, thanks again um, for, for, for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure to, pleasure to have you. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Thanks for having me, Tony. And uh, I appreciate you reaching out to me and like asking what I'm up to. So thank you. Yeah, no worries. It's been a pleasure. And as always, um, if if you've enjoyed the, the the conversation, please give the um, you know the the, the links a, a like, share, and and, and comment and, and subscribe. Um, also check out uh, Anthony's uh, podcast and um, Bit Hippie uh, LinkedIn page. They'll be in the uh, in the in the posts. Um, the links will be in the post as well. So check that out. Um, again, thanks thanks Anthony. It's been a been a pleasure. Speak soon. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye bye.